you know, we have our various faculty members telling us, you know, you're looking at three to five minutes as the attention span once you have their attention. And if you can't get their attention within 90 seconds into a subject matter, you've lost them. I was at a class on learning and the instructor was explaining that every seven minutes or whatever it is, you have to somehow mix things up because people can't focus for longer than that. And I actually asked the instructor, so are we playing into that? I mean, is that inevitable? If that's what we expect of people, will that become the lowest common denominator? Will it get even worse? Well, that's a good question. I've actually been trying to find some really clear evidence that students actually are having reduced attention span. I'm not convinced yet that that's even true. And secondly, you know, there's a number of researchers out there now claiming that students are better multitasking than they used to be. And, you know, so, so in that sense, they're a different type of thinker than they used to be. And not necessarily a worse thinker, not necessarily better, but they're different. I think, I guess I think that that's the advantage of the way that, that media and culture has maybe contributed to this short attention span idea, I think that it has in turn caused people to learn to process things faster as well and to internalize those things and deal with them a little faster. See, the problem is it's not about like timing and it's not about like keeping it short, it's about relevance. And so much of what we say in our lectures are now irrelevant to students. But if it's relevant, my gosh, students will pay attention for hours. I just read something yesterday that said our students that are freshmen today will be learning a completely different set of information in two years, or the information will be old in two years, those that are freshmen today. So as a result, what we have to do is help them learn how to learn. And yet, you know, where is education at this point? Education still seems to be trapped, you know, in books. And uh, not that we don't need books, but we also need to be educating our youth about the world to come, you know. Technology. It has become integral in almost every facet of our society. It has changed and redefined the ways in which we interact and learn. But education has been slow to adapt. For a generation of students who are constantly uploading, upgrading, and altering information, how can academia strive to maintain a relevant learning environment? You know, there's a library at George Madison where they had this great library. Students never came. But students were always in the food court, always hanging out there and so on. So they moved all the books and they put them right in the middle of the food court. And suddenly students actually started reading the books, you know. And so you can do the same thing online. I watch a lot of students, you know, pay more attention to their coursework just based on the fact that it's on the web, and the web is a comfortable environment for them to do that. The model of on the web is that you, you check these things frequently. People check their email 20 times a day, they check Facebook five times, they check you know, CNN.com, their favorite blog, whatever, and by extension, you just get in the habit of checking your course material more frequently and interacting with it more. And I think where professors are losing out, and where universities are losing out, if they want to actually exist in 50 years, is that you have to provide a meaningful experience which you cannot get online, which you cannot get through electronic media. In a lecture, your chances of that are very low. Most people are taking a required lecture and they're sitting in the classroom and the professor is feeding them information that the professor thinks is important. Whereas in an online setting, the information is being attained by the student because they want to attain it. They're actually putting in the search terms themselves and they're finding the information themselves. I think they're much more likely to retain that information and information that is sort of force-fed. How long has the educational system been the way that it has for what, the past, you know, over a hundred years where there's been a classroom, there's been desks, 
the kids come sit down, the professor teaches or the teacher teaches, the students acquire that information, they store it in their memory bank, and then they're all smarter as a result of that, or at least that's the intention. One is taught that information in a textbook is sacred, right? I mean, that's the purpose of memorizing and then having a test on it. And the shift is going to be that everybody will finally sort of figure out that information is not scarce and therefore the traditional lecture format, which is to give information, is in some ways obsolete. You can do anything essentially anywhere, right, and get the same information. There's no actual concrete sense of place where you say, no, you have to be in this place to do this, right? There are no hallowed ivy walls where you have to come in and, you know, and, and engage in the information. Unless teachers and education in general can't gives students something more than that, can't provide them with that real human community um, experience, then they may be replaced by the online classes that they worry so much about being replaced by. I think they're working against the educational system. I mean, they're working against your um, desire to learn more because it's all just presented in this black and white format and you can print it up and never go to class until the test comes. There are those that think, oh my gosh, the slides are up on the internet, so I can just print them off and not have to go to class, which I think is a tragic disservice to the student. Um, then I think students not coming to class and gaining the information online is just a rational change and adaptation of their behavior to say, why go to class? Because I don't have to be in class. In order for the educational systems to keep the attention of these students, they need to maybe, you know, kind of immerse themselves into the technology world. And by doing so, I think they'll keep these students wanting to come back for more. In order to make that happen, educators can just embrace technology, embrace the unknown. I know uh, with a lot of the older professors or the professors that don't necessarily know a lot about computers, they're scared of it. They don't want to incorporate technology in the classroom. They don't want students to incorporate it in the classroom. Um, but basically what you have to do is embrace it. You know, clearly most professors have no clue what technology is all about or how to use it. You know, it's this bewildering thing where it's like buttons and lights and gizmos. And, and, and students are, you know, from the age of you know, five, just, just so technically proficient in technology. They say, oh, well, will the students really get this? And I say, oh, I have no problem. They'll, they'll, they're obviously very comfortable in the digital realm. They get in there. Unlike where older people, my experience has been is, oh, I better not click that, I might break it. You know, and they're very fearful of touching these things, where younger people are just, go, I'm going to click on these things until I figure out how it works, and if I break things, great, I know a little more about it because I broke it. Since 1985 or 86, we've called the individuals born digital natives. And for some reason, the people born after that, and that's what we have at the university today, you know, don't have any trouble. It's just intuitive for them how to use this technology. They're not afraid of it. They don't think it's going to break. And they just think in those ways. I think this day and age with computers, laptops, cell phones, iPods, Blackberries, I mean, any technological adv advancement, educational institutions are having to make these shifts so they can keep up with the time because students are, you know, more involved with technology than they have ever before. Um, teachers have to understand that technology is becoming increasingly a big part of our lives. And students have to understand that, that learning is their number one objective in the classroom and that technology can help that, but it can also hinder that. It's hard to change habits and it's hard to, it's hard to recognize that, that things really have changed as much as they have. And so the challenge has been to bring technology to bear, to enhance and allow you to learn in those ways while bringing the faculty along like me who traditionally think in that linear way so that we can teach in what I think is actually a much better way of solving problems. In many cases, it's not the case that the, the information that they're conveying has gotten better, but it is the act that the student has to interact with it in a little more a personal way that seems to be the improvement there. So I guess part of this is, you know, we can use these tools to actually understand what's relevant to students, for one thing. The other thing is the more we understand their world and the world they grew up in, the more relevant we can make our information to them.